Hey everybody, Coach Toolshed here, and today I'm going to be talking about Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which is a game I've been putting a good amount of time into over the last few days since it came out. And I'll tell you right off the bat, believe it or not, I know that I said before the game came out that I wasn't really feeling it, I wasn't really into Assassin's Creed, wasn't really looking forward to it, but I will say that I have been pleasantly surprised to say that this game is actually... It's not bad. It's a pretty good time that I'm having playing this game. There's a lot of good stuff in here. Now, obviously, it has some drawbacks. First and foremost, I mean, if you don't like Assassin's Creed games to start with, if you didn't like Assassin's Creed Origins last year, you're probably not going to enjoy this game. So, take that as you will. But I think if you did maybe enjoy Assassin's Creed Origins, or maybe you like the Assassin's Creed series in general, there is a lot to like here. And I know there's a lot of people saying, well, why do they even call it Assassin's Creed at all? There's not really, you know, it has nothing to do with Assassins. And I've been thinking about this. And the, the thing that I came up with is, if they decided to make this a game and call it another IP, then everyone would just be saying, well, this is obviously an Assassin's Creed game. Why don't you just call it Assassin's Creed Odyssey? So they really wouldn't have won either way because this game is, it still feels like an Assassin's Creed game, no matter the differences you might have heard about. But it's not really the game I want to talk about so much. I am enjoying it, but that's not really what I want to talk about today necessarily. What I want to talk about is sort of the hot-button topic surrounding this game, which is the microtransaction controversy that a lot of people have been talking about. And a lot of reviewers have brought this up. And earlier this week, we got some tweets from what is probably one of the most respected quote-unquote gaming journalists in the industry, Jason Schreier. And I, I will say that Having looked at his work in the past, he does do pretty good investigative reporting. He's one of the, if not the best, in the in the field as far as investigative reporting, getting some behind-the-scenes information and putting those out into stories. Now, it's when he starts veering into opinion pieces where I start disagreeing with him pretty heavily in a lot of cases. And this week, I think he's really made a huge overstep with his opinions regarding Assassin's Creed Odyssey and how fans and even especially YouTubers have been mishandling this entire situation. Now, for a little backstory, if you don't know which microtransactions I'm talking about, a lot of people who have played the game have made mention of the fact that once you get to a certain point in the game, your XP gains and your level ups get to the point where you're not keeping up with the main story and you're going to get to a point later in the game where you're going to run into a huge wall where you can't progress in the story because you are not at a high enough level and you're going to have to grind for several hours to reach this point. So what Ubisoft in their infinite wisdom has done is allowed you to pay them an extra ten dollars in order to get a permanent increase to your XP gains. You get a permanent 50% XP gain if you give them just a low, low price of 10 extra dollars for the cost of the game. And this is sort of where Jason Trier stepped in and pretty much denounced the YouTube, he specifically calls out YouTube culture, and he said in his Twitter, he said, it's sad how YouTube facilitates this culture where people toss around words like exploitative and predatory without really thinking about what they mean. Assassin's Creed Odyssey microtransactions are, at worst, annoying. They're not a cancer on the video game industry. And now he went on to... There's several tweets. You can keep reading his Twitter feed if you'd like. He went on for several sets of tweets, going back and forth with people in the arguments, defending his own position, saying he wants to have a nuanced discussion about it, but basically saying, you know, YouTubers are sad... And people like you who are watching videos, like mine, are also, you know, we're just sad because we facilitate this culture, especially me as a content creator. And obviously, you know, he's talking more about bigger channels. I'm not saying he's talking about me specifically. But, you know, people who make videos similar to mine saying that we don't really understand, we don't know what they mean when we say words like predatory and exploitative. Jason, let me help you. You don't need to be a games journalist to have basic vocabulary skills. And when it comes to 
games that put systems in place that artificially block your progress at a certain point once you're invested into the game. And, and we see this with all games. They, they once you when you start a game, you start leveling up quickly. They give you a lot of rewards, and then what happens is generally over time, the grind gets harder and harder. And you're going now instead of leveling up, you know, once twice an hour. Now it starts you only leveling up every hour. Now it's taking two hours to level up, three hours to level up. This happens constantly in games that have progression systems tied to levels, which Assassin's Creed Odyssey certainly does. You cannot fight enemies that are too far above your level. You're just going to get annihilated. It's not, it's not going to happen. You're going to get smoked. And I'll be honest, I don't even find that to be the worst of the microtransactions. The worst stuff that I'm actually finding is when you want to go and do upgrades to your gear, to your ship that you get, any of the upgrades, they draw from resources that you find out in the world, and you can get them as rewards for doing certain things, but most of the time you're going to find this stuff out in resource nodes in the world or in little patches of loot, like maybe in a vase or a chest you might find some of this stuff. But, you know, you're going to be collecting trees, wood from trees, you're going to be collecting rocks, you're going to be collecting leather off animals that you can hunt. It's, a, you know, pretty standard crafting materials. But the thing is, is that if you go into the menus and you start looking at how many of these resources you're going to need to start upgrading, you're going to get to the point pretty quick where you're going to need hundreds, literally hundreds of, say, is, I, I'm at the point now where you're going to need like 150 so pieces of wood to do my next upgrade. And that's an awful lot of resource gathering. But, you know, Ubisoft has gone through the trouble. They're going to help you out. You can buy resources. That's right. You can get packs of stuff with, say, 3,000 pieces of wood and, you know, X amount of stone. And, you know, for the low, low cost of, you know, 20 extra dollars, you can buy these resource packs so you can upgrade. Now, once again, you don't have to buy this stuff. But it's certainly being put in your place. When I've been playing this game for, say... 10 straight hours and I'm looking to do an upgrade on something and I'm looking I'm st and I somehow still don't have enough wood to do the next level upgrade after several hours of playing and I'm someone who goes around and grabs any resource node I can find I will grab anything I see laying around as I go I'm, I'm not someone who's just going to fly through everything I'm going to try to grab everything I can see as I'm going through areas so I'm not I'm not someone who's not collecting this stuff as I go and when I look at them to be like wow I still need a hundred more pieces of wood to do this upgrade well I'm sorry how is that not pushing me towards doing these microtransactions if I want to upgrade my stuff now once again you don't necessarily have to you can just take it as it comes to you you could do that you could but it's clearly pushing you in the direction of trying to force you into buying these microtransactions is trying to at least have you start questioning maybe I should buy some of these microtransactions and just as a little push once I got about I don't know say 10 hours into the game they gave me 200 of these credits which is basically two dollars worth of credits that I can buy like a little beginner starter pack worth of resources with like 150 pieces of wood and some other various stuff which is you know there you go. It's basically like a drug dealer trying to hook you on their product. Like, hey, here's a little bit. You can buy a little bit right here. But don't worry. Don't worry about these other microtransactions over here. We'll get to those later. Yeah. So to say that those aren't exploitative and they're just merely annoying. No, actually, it is exploitative. Now, is it as bad as the random loot boxes where you... Where you keep pulling the lever and it's like, what am I going to get this time? No, obviously not. There are gradations to this, clearly. But for him to come out and say that this is not an exploitative form of microtransaction is hogwash. It's ridiculous. And the other thing about this is, it is really ballsy for these games journalists who work at these professional sites to try to explain to gamers and, you know, just random YouTubers like myself that... We're facilitating a sad gaming culture because we're not on board with these microtransactions. Jason, let me point something out to you. You and your colleagues at all these big sites get to play your games for free. 
You get codes, you get review codes, you get review copies, and you can hand those review codes. If you've got a multiplayer game where you can party up with a group of four, you know good and well that they hand you out multiple codes so you can hand them out amongst your friends and fellow colleagues so you guys can play together. And then you have the audacity to turn around and tell us that we shouldn't be complaining about these exploitative, clearly exploitative microtransactions being put in our game. Now, just because you might say that you didn't need to use those, and maybe you don't, I so far have been fine without using them, but they are clearly being dangled in your face, letting you know that, yes, you could speed up this process. And it is tempting, even though I, you'd have to be crazy to actually buy it, but I'm sure people are doing it. I'm sure there's people that are doing it. Of course there are. And, extra, and yeah, Jason, if you're only throwing in an extra tenner, that's not going to be a big deal when you're only throwing in 10 bucks, is it? But when you're throwing in an extra 10 $20 on top of the $60 that you actually purchased, well, that's now a 33% price increase over what you've already spent. So now you're looking at an $80 purchase if you, didn't, if you don't get suckered into buying some of the skin packs on top of it, which once again, you can completely ignore, but they're there. And to say that this stuff is necessary, he he also loves going into the fact that, oh, it's necessary. Otherwise, we won't be able to afford, they couldn't, they couldn't make these games. Sorry, Jason. I know you have some extra access that we don't have, but I'm sure they're not opening their books for you any more than they're opening the books for me. They're not actually showing you the actual dollar amounts. They can give you whatever lip service they want. And I know you have to be friendly with them to maintain your behind-the-scenes sources that you're so good at getting. So you can't go out there and start lambasting these companies. But the, the bottom line is, is that when we have people like Patrick Soderlund raking in $48 million from just, just by himself as an EA executive, and Ubisoft is another massive publishing company. You can't sit there with a straight face and tell me that these people are somehow struggling to make ends meet off these games when you have one person's payroll clearing $40 million. How can you say that with a straight face and have the audacity to condemn people for complaining about these microtransactions being in their games when they do not need to be in there? We're talking about $60 purchases. If you want to sell skins, people will buy them. And if people want to do that, that's one thing. I, I'm not going to get too worked up about skins, even though I still I hate to see that, but I can't get too mad about that. But when it does aff directly affect gameplay, don't sit there and tell me that's not exploitative. Because it is. And don't tell me, don't act like I don't know the meaning of the word. Who exactly do you think you are? I know you game journalists think you're a special breed of person, but I assure you that you're not. People who games, their opinions matter just as much as yours. I know you think that you guys are special. Let me help you out. You are not, sir. That's all I got to say about this. I'm going to be talking more about this game more in depth as I, as I play more of the game. I obviously haven't beaten it yet. It's a very long game, but I'm going to talk about the game more in depth, but I, I just had to call this out because I see these people all the time and when they get confronted like questions like that well how can you tell me that it's worth my money when you're not putting your own money down they always seem to fumble over their words when it comes to stuff like that enough enough that's all I gotta say about this I'm coach toolshed you guys let me know what you think down in the comments below please subscribe if you want to stay in tune with the channel as we move through the fall season and as always keep it turned to 11